On the Mississippi River in Louisiana, USA, is a small town called Vidalia. But although it is small in size, it has taken a giant step to control escalating power costs. 72 kilometers downstream of the town, the Mississippi and the Red Atchafalaya rivers run close together. But there is always a difference in the level between them of between 2.5 and 6 meters. In 1977, the mayor of Vidalia conceived the idea of utilizing this renewable, non-polluting, free source of energy. A Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, or FERC, license to develop the site was obtained in 1982, and the resulting power station has been built and named after the visionary mayor, the Sydney A. Murray Jr. Hydroelectric Station. Two Kwana hydropower companies played a vital role in the completion of this unique and innovative project. The two companies, Kwana Boving of the UK and Kwana Turbine of Sweden, collaborated in this project which incorporates some of the largest bulb turbines in the world and required extremely complex project engineering and management. A major consideration during the preparation of the specification by the Baton Rouge consulting engineers Forti and Tablada working with Segria of France was maximizing the annual energy output and minimizing the construction time. The radical method chosen was to prefabricate the complete power plant in steel at a shipyard in New Orleans, whilst more than 200 miles upstream, the civil construction work was being carried out at the site. Once the prefabricated powerhouse structure was fabricated and fitted out, it would be launched into the river and towed to site. The world's largest prefabricated power station. To maximize the energy output from a channel of fixed width, the turbine design was optimized by carrying out extensive model tests at Kvarna Hydropower's laboratory in Sweden. This was a major consideration, as the electricity generated was to be sold at a profit. From curves of predicted performance, the final specification was selected, giving a speed of 52 RPM and a runner diameter of 8.2 meters. Instead of having the turbine drive the generator directly, a two-stage epicyclic step-up gear was introduced to allow the generator to run at 600 RPM and thus requiring a much smaller bulb diameter. This arrangement was based on Kvarna Hydropower's experience at the very successful Arvester Lilforsch hydroelectric power station in Sweden. The order for a modular prefabricated power plant structure, PPS, was awarded in December 1986 to Avondale Shipyards of New Orleans by the main contractor for the project, Ibasco Constructors Incorporated of Kenner, Louisiana. At the same time, ABB of New Jersey were awarded the contract for the electromechanical plant, and they in turn awarded a contract to the Kvarna Hydropower Companies. The contract awarded to Kvarna was for the design of the waterways, bulb structures, the downstream gates, and the supply of the eight bulb turbines, step-up gear units, bearings, together with supervision of installation and commissioning of supplied plant. This was a major logistical and engineering task requiring close coordination between Kvarna engineers and those of the other contractors and subcontractors. Arranging for the correct delivery times of the casting, forgings and machine work from the various suppliers, many of whom were located in Europe, to complement the construction schedule of the power plant modules at Avondale was a particular problem. As can be seen, the turbine runners and chambers were built simultaneously in Sweden and England to ensure that they were ready on time. Although the runners were finished and delivered on time, for various reasons they were not installed at the shipyard, but installed on site. Meanwhile, at the shipyard in New Orleans, Manufacture and assembly was underway of the fixed guide vane structures and of the bulb units housing the generators and gearboxes. The PPS was assembled from 50 and 100 ton modules with special tools being used for certain machining operations after assembly. The downstream gates, which are used for isolation and also for controlling the flow during stopping and starting a unit, were manufactured to designs by Kvarna Boving, who also supplied all the control equipment. 
Installation of the plant at the shipyard was carefully planned at the design stage and closely supervised by Kvarna hydropowered engineers. As far as possible, all items of plant and systems were installed, tested and pre-commissioned in the shipyard, saving valuable time at site. Work at the shipyard was substantially complete by May 1989 and the PPS was christened in the traditional shipyard ceremony. On the 6th of June 1989, the PPS was launched for its first and only journey, 200 miles up the Mississippi to the power station site. The trip upriver was fairly uneventful, apart from about the halfway stage, where it had to pass under a low bridge and be ballasted using an internal ballasting system and then de-ballasted again. All this had been planned beforehand, but something that definitely hadn't been planned was when a tornado suddenly struck. But the PPS rode it out, and what could have been a disaster resulted in only superficial damage. When the PPS eventually reached the site, it was towed through a gap in the levee, turned through 90 degrees, and maneuvered into position. Then the levee was rebuilt, the area dewatered, and the PPS ballasted to lower it onto its foundations. The PPS was designed so that its mass, when filled with concrete, would be sufficient to anchor it in place. When this was done, it was secured and, where necessary, grouted to the foundation, buttresses and draft tube structure. The runners were installed at site because it was convenient to coincide this work with the voids in the structure being filled with concrete. This involved removing the top half of the runner chamber to allow the installation of the hubs and the assembly of the blades. Kvarna engineers supervised the installation of the turbine runners, all eight of which were installed in just three months by running two shifts. At the same time, the hydraulic cylinders for the downstream gates were installed. Once installation was complete, the remaining pre-commissioning of equipment and systems was carried out prior to rotational tests. The first unit to be commissioned rotated on the 26th of April 1990 and was subjected to a comprehensive commissioning program that included synchronization and overspeed testing. Once the team of Kwana and ABB engineers had verified that the first unit was behaving exactly as predicted, the remaining units followed very rapidly. The average time from first rotation to commercial operation was an astonishing 10 days. This achievement was the result of very careful planning at all stages and of the skill and experience of the engineers at site. All eight units had completed their 30-day reliability runs by mid-August 1990, only just over three and a half years from the release of the contract in December 1986. The final step in the story is the dedication ceremony which took place on the 22nd of September 1990. Kvarna Hydropower is participating in major hydroelectrical projects requiring advanced and novel engineering solutions all over the world. And the Vidalia story is an example of one such enterprise now successfully completed.